What the fuck? Oh! Why the fuck can I get shit right? Fuck, bro! Fuck! 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 Alright, Edwin in the building. What's going on, my man? Nothing, man, man. Nothing, much, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right, man. So, uh, do me a favor. Introduce yourself. Let everybody know who you are, and uh, and I, I guess we can go ahead and just jump right into it, man. Because what you put on your TikTok was was kind of mind blowing, bro. Let's get it. Hey. Yeah, yeah. So my name is Edwin. I'm from Anaheim, California. Uh, nothing much to me. Um, there's a. I guess I just got pretty known i guess for my tiktok got blown up recently so yeah now i'm here talking to you <laughs> okay that's what's up you born and raised in uh california born and raised there probably in the dirty city. hold on what'd you say i said born and raised there probably gonna die there too i love california <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up man so you 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 went into the army, right? Uh, you right. You know, I I guess you got with your significant other at the time, and you was like, hey, you know, I need to do something about getting this bag. I need to make sure that my you know that my potential family will be all right. You know, yeah. and and, and I, you know I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking the army will help me out not only financially but will help me out you know you know help me out as growing as a man you know to make sure that i'm right. up to taking care of my family so you right. you you went in how how long you was in for so um to, to be honest to be, to, be, to be completely honest when i i, I was in, uh I, I just got out of or I didn't just get out of um, the army. I just basically got out of like training. So it was just my training that was gone for three and a half months. And what ended up basically happening was that, you know, I really joined, not, not really because like the financial aspect, it was kind of more of like the benefits that I needed because um, me as a civilian, you know, I made pretty good decent money where I'm from here in Cali. So what ended up happening is that I told my wife, I was like, yo, you know, I think that we should really take advantage of the opportunities. Like they have things like, you know, the VA loan, um, you know, the, the insurance is, you know, great, you know, the dental insurance is great, the vision, all that, all that's awesome. So she agreed upon it. So she understood what was coming. And then just sure enough, like, um, just things went in a different direction. I didn't expect it to happen that way. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still currently serving. Uh, I signed my contract for a total of eight years. So, yeah, pretty much. So you, so so, are, are, now I I saw your other TikTok where you was explaining the differences of being a a full time uh, serviceman versus a part time serviceman, and 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 a part time serviceman is the uh what's that reserve the reserve, and you you yeah. so you you explained that on another TikTok. So was that mm -hmm. when? So that you you went in to be a reservist, and you was only gone for yes, three. And, you was only gone for three and a half months, and 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 she couldn't rock with you on that. Yeah, bro. Honestly, that's 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 the part that tripped me out because I mean, if anybody anybody would need my wife, um, so my ex wife, I should say at this point, is that nobody expected it. Like that, that was the craziest part. Like. She was one that you knew she was the one. Like when you met her and you talked to her, you just knew she was the one. Like we were together. I mean, we lived together for almost three years, and then we basically were cooking for each other. We did the whole nine yards. So we've only been married for like not that long. The craziest part: we were only married for like six months, which is even like more upsetting to me. So when everybody again, everybody that knew, well, you know, my ex-wife knew that that she would cook for me. She did my laundry. Everything a housewife does, and I pretty much brought home the bacon. I brought home the food. I brought everything. So the fact that you know what happened really just shook everybody. And then 
Yeah, dude. Like, I just went in with a as a reserve, and I finished my training, and then just out of nowhere, like, it, it just took a whole 360 turn. Like, I just, nobody expected it. Like, I didn't even think she was going to fall out of love. And she was the type of chick that she would, she would look at you dead in the eye. Like, literally, look like, dead in the eye. You're locked in, and you're looking at her. And she would say, if we ever get married, that's it. It's over. Like, we're going to, we're, we, are, we are going, we are being married forever. So I was like, cool, I'm set. Like, well, I have nothing to worry about. So it just, I was just really disappointed when everything just went down. Man, that's I'm I'm sorry to hear that, bro. I, 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 and to be I, she she didn't give you no no type of ultimatum. I mean, like you you was like for those three months while you was in training, you had to be gone, right? Yeah, I was so, gone. I was I was stationed in Fort Leonard, Missouri. Okay, so you down in Missouri, you a far cry from uh from California, by the way. <laughs> See, you in yeah. you in Missouri, you you in Missouri. She's back at home in California. I mean, it wasn't like yeah. uh, she she didn't she didn't like give you a call to say, "Hey, I'm feeling some kind of way or whatever, whatever." I mean, all this to happen is like bam, right? You right right when you came to the house. Everything was packed up. Everything was gone, and she just told you, "Hey, I'm hooked up with somebody else." Bye. After three years of being you together, what? here's what um, you know. What let me let me tell you how like it kind of went down because it it's really really crazy how everything actually happened. Because so basically, when you're in the, when when you're when you're in training, you only get your phone for thirty minutes out of the week, and you usually get it on Sundays. So every Sunday, whoa, I whoa, her, whoa, right? whoa, 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 this is some disciplined shit right here. Like 30 yeah. minutes on a Sunday? And that was it for the that, whole week. For you the whole week. And that's, for the whole week, and that's if you earned it. Earn, earned it? Bro, tell yeah. me about this earned stuff, man, because I know for people that's coming into the service that's so used, especially for the people that's so used to being on social media, calling their friends and, and, and just having a good yeah. old time with your phone to come into the service yeah. and, 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 and get, and get your phone rejected to just earning status. That, that gotta be, that gotta be something, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for me, you know, me personally, I was the type of person that, yeah, just like how you said, I'd be on my phone all the time. So it was a, it was a hard adjustment. And, you know, and then I, I, I remember in the beginning, I would mentally prepare my ex-wife and I would say, hey, just let you know that when I go into training, I'm not going to be able to use my phone as much. Like, so just understand that I want you to respect the time that we have and we're on the phone. So if we do end up talking on the phone, like, please, you know, like, you know, don't be out with your friends. Don't do this. Don't do that. It's just, I want you to be with me for those 30 minutes. After that, do whatever you want, but respect the minutes. So okay. basically, yeah. So when it came to like earning those minutes, earning the minutes pretty meant, like, pretty much meant like the whole week you did well. I mean, did you do well in your, in your performance well? Was your formation good on time? Did you show up to first formation? I mean, I, I remember talking to some of the other platoons and some of the other companies and they would tell me like, yeah, dude, honestly, like we would get our like every single time we relate to formation, that was that was basically one minute off, uh, off our time. So at the end of the week, they'll have like fourteen minutes, thirteen minutes, you know, ten minutes, and yeah, so it just really got reduced a lot. Uh, luckily, my platoon was kind of on point, so for the most part, we had our thirty minutes full. But yeah, they were pretty strict on it. They would they would have a timer, and then they would say, all right, like your phone should be. You should be using your phone for those thirty minutes. Once a certain like your phone should be in the crate in this box uh, before the timer hits zero. So you technically didn't even get your full thirty minutes. You just had to have it in before the countdown. If not, I think your phone probably just be taken away. So basically, it was that. So yeah, discipline was all around as far as like you had to earn your phone time. Wow, that's crazy. And that and do you think? Do you think because of that she felt some kind of way? I mean, that would be like, that would be like me. You know, I'm a truck driver, so you know, I, you know, I've been dri I've been driving trucks for, I've been driving trucks for the last seven years or so, and you wow. know, the the significant other. Well, I was already separated before I got into trucking, but 
I, I talked okay. to I, I, I talked to some friends and some, you know, some truckers that was already in the lifestyle that they were saying that, you know, this type of lifestyle, you know, put pressure on your on your relationship. You know, like yeah. sometimes you can only you can only talk to them for so long or, you know, or being away or something like that. But with technology, mm -hmm. you know, with technology now, I mean, well, for you guys, it was 30 minutes and those is precious 30 minutes. But for us, I mean, we can we, we can jump on FaceTime. We can. You know, we got the we got the trucker's headset that we could talk all like I'm doing now or or whatever the case, man. Right. I mean, she I mean, why did she ever bring any issues up with you while you was while you was there? So as far as like the issue and how really everything rolled down, it, everything happened like basically in a week. So before, prior to everything going down that one week, I had one little red flag. So, typically, I'm not a jealous person at all. Like, I don't get jealous at all. Like, if you, somebody wants to talk to my girl, good luck because, you know, I don't lose. So, um, and at the same time, I was like, you know what? Like, there's no point in me being jealous. So, I never really just been a jealous person to begin with my whole life. So, what ended up happening was one day she called me and she just said, hey, how you doing? And I'm telling her what's good, you know, we just have, we're just chatting it up for my 30 minutes. And then one day she just, she threw me with the comments. She was like, yeah, you know, she's, she's like, I don't feel the same anymore. It's just, it, it just like, everything is just awkward. Like, you know, you're not here, you know, you, you know, you've changed and I've changed. And the minute that she said, uh, you've changed, she told me that I changed. That took me by surprise. And at that point I gave myself a red flag. But I didn't know at the time if I was overthinking it or if I was just simply just kind of, you know, psyching myself out because, you know, I haven't seen it for such a long time that I was just kind of like being paranoid. So I let it go. I was like, you know what? No, it's, it's okay. It's in your head. You just miss her. You're just overthinking stuff. So literally, I just let it go. So then finally, like next, like next week, come rolls along. And then I tell her, hey, we know what's going on. What's good? How are you? And then she just kind of starts being distant. She starts giving me like this, and I would talk to her, and she would just give me like one word answers. And I'm like, you know, what's going on? Like, are you good? And then she's like, yeah. And just at one point, I knew that something was up. I had a feeling. So me, I'm I'm very direct. I don't really beat around the bush. And you know, I just straight up asked her, like, who's in the picture? And then she was just like, no. Like she's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, no. Who's in the picture? Because clearly, you're giving me these like. You're giving me these like mixed signals. You're being very distant and you're not even replying. You don't even sound excited to talk to me anymore. Like who's in the picture and what's going on? You know what? She was like, no. You, you know what? Right there, this like this like women no notice a change in men. Men notice mm -hmm. a change in their women. Definitely. That's especially, 100 true. especially if y'all been together for a long time. And and y'all kind of yeah. like know one another a little bit. You know when it's something to matter. Like I've been I, I I've been married for you know over twenty five years, and throughout that twenty five wow. year period, I knew when it was something wrong with my wife at the time. I knew when she was sad. I knew when she was upset. I knew when she was pissed off. I even know that if I did something wrong, would triggered her. You know what I'm saying? Right. Same thing. Same thing with her. She knows all. She knows mm. all my little quirks. She knows all everything. If I'm <laughs> upset, if I'm if I'm not feeling right or whatever. I mean, perfect example is when I was at home. You know, when I was doing roadside, and I was at home and I wasn't talking at all. And she came downstairs. She was like, "Yo," I was like, "What's up? You ain't getting no calls today, didn't you?" Jeez. No. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. So by oh, her yeah. but by her but by her telling you that you know you change, do you during the course of being, you know, being in training for the reserves and everything, do you think that it that being in that do change you? Um as far as change, 
I wouldn't say I necessarily changed. Maybe I was, I was more disciplined at the time. Maybe like just me being my lifestyle, just you know the army implementing stuff. But as far as like did I change? Like was I like disrespectful or did I do anything? I don't know. Absolutely not. Um, I knew that the minute that she said that I've changed, I, I, it was a complete fallacy. Like I just I, I knew that she wasn't telling. I, I knew she was lying. I know she was just saying that to kind of make herself like look good in a way. So absolutely not. Like I didn't change at all. If, I mean, I, I I changed to be a better person, but obviously it wasn't reciprocated. So no, I didn't change. All right, all right. Now doing now when she said now when she said that did you 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 all automatically put in your mind that it it could be somebody else in the picture right right when you when when you kind of like brought that to her attention did she try to like throw it off or did she stepped up to the plate to it or or what so for when that happened she just kind of like instant the minute i said it and this is how i knew i was right she got very defensive about it and she got very very like she went from like a calm mood to like a very like antsy mood and she was kind of like no like, what are you talking about like well, like you know why would you think that and i'm like because you know i was born at night but i wasn't born last night so i would tell her i was like i know like i have a feeling that something's going on but obviously you're not telling me so at that point at that very moment i remember I, that's when i actually broke it off when i told her that we were not together and then um i would tell her okay we're not together anymore but then she just kind of like, you know, she started crying and she goes, no, like, I'm sorry. Like, you know, please, like, don't like, please, let's, let's just let's continue. It's just honestly because I miss you so much. So she gave me that little role of like, she kind of played me in a way because she made me feel like, okay, like she really doesn't miss me. Right. So me, you know, being, being like all, being all like sad and missing and I was like, okay, fine. Like, you know, let's give it another shot. But before I did, I was like, look, before I do take you back, I was like, I just want you to, I want you to know. I want you to think about what you're saying and think about what your life is, you know, assess it. And then tell me next week, because my phone time was up. And I told her, next week, I want you to tell me if we're together or not. Okay. And then that was the turning point of the whole relationship. That's when I was like, this this is going to, something's going to happen here. And I didn't know what it was going to happen, but I knew something was going to happen. I knew shit was going to hit the fan. Sorry if I cussed. Uh, I knew that stuff was going to hit the fan. (laughs) Uh, I knew something was going to hit the fan next week and then that's when everything started going downhill so pretty much the so it's safe to say the ultimatum pretty much came from you and not her right okay. um but yeah, did, yeah, but so you I, already I but but you already you you already knew you already had a feeling that it was a potential in 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 the uh in the window anyway, pretty much. Right. So I had something of the potential, but the thing is that when I called her next week, she was just like, yeah, we're together. So I'm like, cool, I'm set. Nothing else, well, nothing else went wrong. So as, 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 I'm, as, as I'm talking to her, I get a text message. I get a text message from my old friend that I've had for like 14 years. Oh, I'm on the phone. No, 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 bro. No, don't, don't, don't yeah. tell me where I think this is going, man. I'm, Go, I'm going there. Go ahead. So, so, so basically, I'm talking to her, and then I, my one of my best friends, like again, I've known him for 14 years, and he hits me up and he says, "Yo, as soon as you, uh, as soon as you like get this message, like call me." So I'm like, "All right." So I tell my wife, I was like, "Hey." Uh, I got to go. I mean, I want to go say hi to my mom. And so I want to call her because, you know, we only had limited time. So I just want to talk to her for a minute. And after that, you know, quote unquote, call my mom. So I hang up the phone with her. I start down with my buddy. I'm like, hey, what's up? He goes, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, good, good. And then he goes, and, and, I, and then I, I started talking to him casually. And I hope everything is good. You know, are you doing all right? And then he just kind of stops me. Look, 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 I'm not going to waste your time because I know you have 30 minutes. So I'm really just going to straight out and say it. And she, she just hit me with it. She was like, the girl's talking to another dude. So, uh, oh, okay. Oh, like, uh, okay. See, I thought, what? Hold on. Is there still more yeah. to this with this dude? He's just, he, he's just getting you ready for the, for the punchline or is he on your side saying that somebody else 
is talking to uh talking to your wife. He, so basically there's a little more to it because I was just like well, first, I was like first of all I was like I was like, wait, what? Like I'm confused. Like I'm like, Well what are you talking about? He goes, Yeah, you know, your wife's talking to another person. So basically what ended up happening that week that I told her, Hey, I mean, I want you to think about this and all this other stuff. Like we're we're gonna determine if we're still together next week. So um, but she obviously, but obviously that, that phone call, she told me that we're together. So I'm assuming that the entire time we were together still. So she ended up, uh, what she did was she was posting, she was actually, she actually posted pictures with this new guy on social media, but she blocked everybody that knew about me. So any like family friend, any, well, any, any of my boys, anything like that, she blocked. And the reason how my best friend found out because he was blocked too from all that stuff, was that my best friend's wife has my ex-wife, you know, um, Instagram and social media, right. but didn't block her. So you didn't block so, her, so her friends will see what her friends sees, so forth and so on. Right, so basically, my friend's wife saw the pictures and then woke up my buddy like at 2 o'clock in the morning. He was like, yo, are they still together? And they're like, and he was like, yeah, they're still together. Like, why? What's up? My buddy's like, yeah, they're still together. And he goes, well, it doesn't look it by this picture. And it, they were, they posted a picture and they were, they were at a, an event. And then there's more pictures coming along and then they were at a hotel chilling. So. Wow. I'm pretty sure at that point, it's just, and at that point, my phone time was done. So I couldn't really talk back. I couldn't talk to her. So I just told I just told him to send me those pictures, send them my way, and then I'll talk to her a different time. And then next week I hit her up and I'm like, all I did was send her the photos, and I'm like, you do you. If this makes you happy, and whatever it is, what it is. And I told her, I called her. I was like, at the time it was I forgot what month it was, and I say you like you need to get out of my apartment as soon as possible. And then, what? sure enough, now when, uh, yeah, when I came back home, every, everything was gone. Yeah, so, so I, basically, I told her, hey, you need to get out of my apartment. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to deal with your bullshit. Like, I can't believe you just did all this. And, like, in a matter of one week, and you lost all my respect. Like, the fact that you were trying to be this sneaky, even on social media, is disrespectful to me. And then, sure enough, I told her, you need to get out of my house. I was like, get your stuff and leave. And I come back from my training. And my apartment is empty, like wow. empty. Now, now let me ask you this: All right, uh, uh, now all, all while all this is going, you guys were married, right? Yes, we were married. All right. So now, after you know, now after everything has said and done, have you guys, uh, you know, are are you going to be one hundred with the divorce or? Y'all gonna try and reconcile? Where, where, where are you at on the situation now? So the relationship is done. I'm not gonna go back. Um, there's no point in going back. To me, it's just you know you lost my trust already. We're 100 percent going with the divorce. Or well, either way, like even if she wasn't, we're still going 100 percent with it. I'm not wasting time because I know what I did. I, I am, and then it's kind of weird because I knew that the relationship was still gonna be done. And then I was not going to take any excuses because she still tried to kind of like make up excuses of what she, why she did what she did. Um, she's just kind of just saying, you know what, like there's things that you say that gets me pissed off. But when I realized what she was saying, it was stuff that I would say like a year or a year and a half ago. And I'm like, wait, you're basing this, your actions of what you did mm-hmm. off something that happened a year or a year and a half ago. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. Clearly you just, you can't be accountable for your own actions. And you're just trying to blame it on something and try to pretty much justify what you did was okay. So at that point, I was like, there's no point in arguing. I can't deal with this. And then I just had to tell myself, Charlie Mike, which means like continue mission. Like just, it is what it is. Move on. And it was probably just one of the most difficult things I had to do mentally. Exactly. It definitely was one of the hardest things I had to do mentally. Exactly. Well, Edwin, man, you know, this is a heartfelt story. Thank you for sharing it with me, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, 
I'm uh well, I'm following you on your TikTok, man. You got some you got some uh you know, you got some good TikToks on there. I'm not me personally, I'm not a fan of TikTok, but uh but you know, but meeting, you know, interesting and good people like yourself, man, and and having the opportunity to the 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 chat with you is 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 a good thing to me, man. Uh how can they how can they follow you on your TikTok, man? What's what's your TikTok? Go ahead and shout it out. Uh, my TikTok is going to be It's Sarty. Um, so it's I T S S A R T I. That's going to be my TikTok. And if anybody wants to hit me up on IG, this is going to be um, S P C S A R T I. So it's pretty much special with Sarty S P C S A R T I. So yeah, those are just my, my those are my credentials. All right, all right. You guys know that the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Man Podcast Show. If you guys want to get at me, y'all know how to do it. Two one six six zero zero two zero nine zero. Just like my guy right here, Edwin. Yo, much you know. I, I hope everything works out for you in the future. Hopefully, you find that right someone that can you know that can uh, get with you on on your level and everything and um. And, and it should be somebody out there for you, bro. Should be. But uh, I appreciate you uh, yeah. talking it up. I mean, chopping it up to me, man. I enjoyed myself. And uh, we'll we'll get back at each other again, man. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, class kids, went pop. Death to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales, won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, the bars, you got pops. Urge right the Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom, me, but go off. I'll make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rum, pump, pump. Y'all fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.